Hello everyone, Clifford Bennett, Chief Economist, ACY Securities. So how was that weekend that I wished you a spectacular one for? If you're on the east coast of Australia, of course, it was beautiful weather for the beach. Uh, wherever you are in the world, whatever you were doing, I hope it was a very enjoyable weekend indeed. Friday's price action in New York justified all those warnings I've been giving during the week uh, as we saw bonds come under pressure and of course, US equities having a big down day. And markets will try that. I often mention, don't I, the Monday morning bounce or the Monday Asia through New York trading bounce. Now, previously I had said that could last for a couple of days. Today, however, I am a little concerned that any rally or bounce will be short lived. Hi traders, and thanks for watching. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank our incredible viewers for tuning into our channel. We would greatly appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button as we're pushing for the 10,000 subscriber mark by the end of the year. Now back to the video. I've got a few things going on, but that University of Michigan sentiment, consumer sentiment data for the United States on Friday, just really a diabolical number, has been for some time. I keep trying to tell people that US consumer is depressed, but they keep saying retail sales are strong, but they keep forgetting retail sales are not adjusted for the higher prices. So the US consumer is depressed and the, you know, University of Michigan sentiment index is one of the more reliable and reputable data series in the world. And normal for the US economy is 90 to 100. Well, you know, that is normal, but we'd like to see it more like 110 or even 120 in a, in a strong economic period. Where that number is today is 67.7 for September. So reasonably recent data survey and just pointing to GFC style levels of consumer confidence. It is GFC levels, by the way. Uh, we also had manufacturing came out up 0.1%. Nice to see some stabilization. Industrial production up 0.4%, a reasonable number. But remember, manufacturing has been in recession for some time in the United States. It's been contracting for a long period of time. And even that industrial production number, it's a nice monthly number for August but on a trend basis over the last four to six months, it's really averaging 0.1% per month. So basically industrial output is flatlining after a severe contraction period. Uh, and I would suggest that manufacturing in the US is beginning to stabilize. No doubt though, it remains at very depressed levels. And I think we could say that even with that positive one month number, most likely US manufacturing remains in recession. And even if it were to stabilize, please do remember that it would be stability at a much reduced level of production. Um, around the world, we continue to, continue to see GFC style numbers. I mean, just this morning in New Zealand, we saw the services PMI there falling away still at really you look back at the chart it's gfc levels so the world economy is not in a happy place equity markets are only beginning to realize that as they move into a period being confronted uh, by really further pressure for the federal reserve to again hike interest rates now it won't be at this meeting well, there is a small risk of growing risk. Durable goods, or sorry, import prices were very strong in the US last week, again, putting pressure on the Federal Reserve. There is a growing risk of a Fed hike at one of the second, third or fourth meetings from now. But I'm starting to think there's even a slight probability the Fed could hike rates this week. Now, it probably won't. But the accompanying statement and rhetoric is likely to be very hawkish indeed. So even though rates may stay on hold by the Federal Reserve this week, the accompanying comments and statement will be very strong, very hawkish, and will be enough to spook equity markets yet again. 
So it's very difficult to see people really lining up to buy stocks ahead of that Fed Reserve statement. And after the statement, when there's, even though there's, even if on the initial announcement, even if there's no rate hike, you might see some market buoyancy, but I just don't see it lasting very long at all. Because as I've been pointing out for some time, Main Street United States really is, as that consumer sentiment data totally confirmed on Friday, very much in the doldrums, very much at risk of further severe slowdown. And as I always point out, you know, this is an economy slowing with interest rates still staying high or going high, higher. It's an economy slowing with high inflation, particularly that core number. Uh, so, and it's an economy slowing with the administration up there on the hill saying it's the strongest economy in the world, which is a complete falsehood, but it doesn't seem to matter for the political spin at the moment out there in propaganda world. So while they're doing that, they're obviously not thinking about any policy initiatives to rescue the US economy. And that's what I've been saying all along. We've had economic slowdowns before, but usually the central bank reacts by cutting rates. Can't do that this time because inflation's staying stubbornly high and it's even thinking about raising rates higher. Or we have government policy initiatives to turn that economic slowdown around. And we're not going to get those these times because the Biden administration wants to head to the next presidential election, still claiming the US economy is strong. And of course, they couldn't be doing that if they were providing economic rescue packages. This is a diabolical matrix for the US economy going forward. Um, bond yields, bond prices are going to continue to be sold off, yields higher. That, that's the case regardless of what the Federal Reserve does because the private sector in its lending practices is increasingly looking to price in uncertainty wherever it lends funds to corporations or consumers or individuals in the United States at the moment. So the cost of borrowing will continue to go up, placing pressure on those bond prices, yields higher regardless of the Federal Reserve. And if we do get a hike from the Federal Reserve in the second, third or fourth meeting from now, just the jawboning thereof, I think there is further movement for higher yields yet still, which of course also means greater mortgage stress for the United States. Not a positive outlook for the US economy, and I'm conveying it so that you can be prepared for what may lay ahead and be quite the surprise, it would seem, to many other an economic forecaster or commentator out there, particularly the big banks or Wall Street focused organizations, which continue to be a, just a little bit head in the clouds, ivory tower in their approach to markets at the moment. Thanks very much. I wish you all the best for the week. Clifford Bennett, Chief Economist, ACY Securities.